So we just finished our fantasy landscapes. And through unit four, we learned the basics of compositing as it relates to setting. Now with unit five, we're gonna learn the basics of compositing as it relates to character design or creature design. So this is very common in jobs where you are inventing something new. It can be for feature films, it can be for animation, it can be for video games. And we all have our favorite kind of fantasy concepts. The tricky thing here is just like what we did with our fantasy landscape, we want to use believable source material. So mostly photographic source material so that our fantasy creature will look as realistic. As Once you find a good image in Pixabay and you download it, it goes to your downloads. And then you want to organize it. And how do you know what to look for? Huh. So, let's do date added. So before you start searching for your references, I want you to get inspired, maybe by a Pokemon, maybe by a video game, creature, maybe by Greek mythology, and think, how are you going to create a creature? So I, I asked you in class just to shout out some animals, and I got these three animals, a duck, a pangolin, and an axolotl. And I just kind of started with the duck's head and then drew a spine, thinking of the silhouette, right? Thinking of how to showcase that animal's anatomy thinking where different parts of different animals might go. That gives me a way to start looking. So I start by going to Pixabay and I look for something like a duck head. So I've collected quite a bit of reference that I'm pulling from my Dropbox and putting into my computer's file for assignment two. And it's separated into arms, the body or the shell, the tail, and a little uh, axolotl. Let me put everything into that folder. And even though I'm required to use five different sources minimum, I'm definitely going to save more than that as different options. And they're all guided by my sketch. All right. Once you've done your sketch, you can post that into Canvas right here. And that's your first major kind of creative act. Because we're sketching it out beforehand and then finding reference, this ensures that we are fulfilling our own creative vision. We are not just using someone else's idea and we're not just using someone's creature. For instance, taking a pool, this would be a derivative work if we, if we just changed one or two things. But if we base it off of our own sketch, then we're truly transforming something into our own vision. So I am not going to use a reference like this unless I just want to use one aspect of it, like the neck, to fulfill something in my sketch. Now, how do you know when something's been fully transformed and thus is original? And that's, that's not something you know for sure. But there are legal guidelines for it, which is not as strong as legal precedent. And the legal guideline for truly transforming something into something that's not derivative, but is instead an original artwork, is to change it at least 20%. So we are taking no chances by taking at least five major sources to create our one vision. We are not relying on any image more than 20%, right? So these will definitely be original compositions and we'll, we'll work hard to, to continue that. And my, my goal is, whenever I'm using someone else's work, I try to source it from public, public domain or Creative Commons open sources. So even if they do recognize their work, they've already granted those permissions. But even if 
I don't manage to use Creative Commons or public domain, that the person that that created the original source material would never recognize their pixels in my work because I have so thoroughly transformed them. So that's using Pixabay. What if you can't find what you're looking for on Pixabay? Well, then you got to use Google Image Search, but there are some ways you can make it easier. So for the axolotls are not that common, and so Pixabay doesn't have that many images of it, whereas Google Images has a lot more. But this does not mean that they are all good quality. So we have to go to Tools under Image Search and search for a size that's large. And that will mean that at least one of the pixel dimensions is at least a thousand pixels or bigger. And then we can click on usage rights and say only Creative Commons licenses. Now that doesn't mean they're Creative Commons open, but it means they're, they're something other than just strictly copyrighted. And that will limit it quite a bit. And then you can go from there. When you are saving from Google, it's a little bit more difficult. So for instance, Flickr is a good site that used to be only for Creative Commons. But what is nice is it will list its, its Creative Commons uh, attributions here. So this is a Creative Commons, which means you have to give attribution to the person and you, you cannot profit from it. It's called an attribution non-commercial generic Creative Commons license. So if I wanted to use this source, I'm going to need to change it so much that it's not recognizable because I don't plan on, on giving Travis attribution for the work. So it's always good to know what rights are connected to your images. All right. But Pixabay is a wonderful resource because they'll always be high quality. And Pixabay is growing all the time and you can contribute yourself. Okay, so I've got my creature reference. What's next? Well, I want to build it on top of my sketch. So very similar to what we did with landscape. I can close this stuff down. I'm going to open Photoshop and I'm going to open my sketch in Photoshop. Maybe I, I do a screen grab or a photograph of my hand-drawn sketch. This was a photograph of the sketch I did on the whiteboard. Or maybe I did a digital drawing of it. Now I'm going to crop, just like we did for our landscape, a little bit closer to my sketch so I get a sense of its height and width because I want to make sure that this, like my landscape, is print quality in size. Then I'm going to image and image size. And I want to check resample. And I want it to be, note the original uh, dimensions, because my camera has pretty good resolution. So it's already over 2000 by 2000 pixels. But I want it to be at least 10 inches wide. I'll actually do 10 inches tall by 350 pixels per inch. So I'm more than doubling its size. It used to take only 14 megabytes, now it's gonna be 37 megabytes. Of course, that upsamples all of the, the pixels of the original photo, and it's gonna make them slightly blurry and, and distorted. But this is just my guiding sketch in the background. Okay, then I'm gonna make a duplicate of it with Command J, and then I'm gonna go on the background and I'm gonna increase the canvas size to 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. Hit Command zero to fit it all on the screen. And then I'm gonna fill that background with middle gray. So just like we did with the landscape. This time though, I am not bringing on in landscape elements, I am bringing on creature elements. And an extended metaphor I use for creature creation and compositing is building a car. 
It's like an assembly line. And what's the, the main thing you're gonna build for the car? If you're in the Ferrari workshop in Italy, you're gonna work on the engine first. That's like the heart of the car. If that doesn't work and isn't built right, why build the rest of it? So for a creature creation, the focal point of the creature is always the head. And so the head is usually where I start to build first, but I don't build it and, and weld it to my, my plan right away. I'm gonna build it off in one corner of the shop. And I might build it with a little bit more detail and more resolution than I need. So let's open up head parts. And just like we started our landscapes by going to the far background, I want to use one head resource as the main kind of skeletal template that I build on top of. And I think the head that's in the best position is this one, even though it's the, the most boring duck, just a mallard duck. And notice that resolution is plenty big enough. Thank you, Pixabay. So I'm going to hit return. And then I'm just going to do a really rough cutout of it, just the head with enough overlap into the neck to be useful. So I just lasso that. I have a two pixel feather on that, but it doesn't need any because I'm going to be erasing it out later. And then command J to duplicate. And then I'm going to delete the layer that it came from. So that automatically rasterizes it for me. And then I can immediately with Command T, rotate it. I can even play with warping it. I'm not trying to finish off the head. I'm trying to find the proportions that are going to work for my creature. Now you can warp, you can distort, you can do a lot to alter the proportions of your photos, but you're not able to alter the pose of your photos. So no matter what I do, I can't turn this profile head into a three-quarter view head by warping it. I can do a lot of things. I can distort it. I can tug it in different ways, but I can't ever get that angle on the head. But what I do like about this duck head's reference are the, the feathers that transition into the chest. And so that's what I want from this one. I like all of the plumage and I can go all the way around the eye and steal a lot of that. And I like all the colors. If you're gonna make a fantasy composite creature, might as well play with different textures and colors. I'm gonna duplicate that and then delete. And then maybe move this on top Aha. And I can play with the scale. So right now I'm just getting the parts of my head together. I really liked this kind of goose mask that it has. So I like the idea of kind of, I like personality in my creature designs. So I thought I might steal this mask and that eye with enough overlap with the feathers around it. So I'm going to duplicate that out, Command J, and then delete the layer it came from. I move that, and I might just immediately Command T, play with its scale. Only ever shrinking from the native resolution, not growing it. Something like that. So because the bill, because the bill of the duck is at that three quarter angle and my base layer is at that three quarter angle, I have a lot more flexibility when it comes to how I texture it and how I might use other aspects. So I might stretch this out lengthwise a little bit. If I want to distort it, I hold down shift. If I want to line that eye up with the original eye, I can take its opacity down and then line it up perfectly. 